So one of my students has asked me a bit about rhythm playing, um, how to kind of play along with songs where there isn't a very obvious rhythm pattern. Um, I, I know exactly what he means, you know, there's kind of songs where the guitar is fairly nondescript happening somewhere in the background, or maybe it's a, a song where there isn't really any guitar, and you're given the basic chords, you know those sheets you get from Ultimate Guitar, where it's got the lyrics, and then it's got, play this chord here, this chord here, you know the ones. Um, and I get that, it's not easy to look at something like that and be given a bunch of chords and go, right, strum along with this song. We're going to go with the real basics today because this is a really big subject and obviously a lot of this is down to playing experience, songs you've played in the past, musicians you've played with and the kind of circumstance you're getting chucked into. So if you're kind of told right here you go play with this band here's the chords get it right you're going to need a lot of experience to back you up on that. So if we start right at the lowest level of your first steps into playing along with something that isn't completely guided then I think we're going to be okay. Um, first thing is to understand the beat of your song because that's what you're playing to when you're playing rhythm and guitar. So if you're imagining your beat was just one, two, three, four, then we've got the really basic option of just playing on every beat of that bar. So let's say we're going to start with our A minor chord. Oh, such a great sound. Um, and we've got our beat one, two, three. You've got to keep it really simple. Think about the dynamic control there, because you've got a very simple strumming pattern, but you're going to want to emphasise the first beat of the bar, certainly, um, and then that will help make it a little bit more musical. Now, people can struggle with upstrokes. I know your, your plectrum or your fingers get kind of jammed on that high E, and it kind of does that, which isn't particularly pleasant to listen to. So keep your plectrum quite loose, or if you're not using a plectrum, if you're just showing your fingers, I will use my thumb for upstrokes, and I use the tips of my fingers for downstrokes. So if I do the same exercise, yeah. So try that. So what you want to do is what I would suggest: practice your strumming every beat. So and then alternate the next bar with an upstroke at the end. So if you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and, that then gives you a kind of a more musical approach. So I'm gonna play four bars, I'm gonna alternate between the basic strumming and then adding that and in on the end. Then let's take it on a little bit further. Let's compare this to a real life song that you would actually probably want to try and play along with that hasn't got much going on for you to follow. That would be, in, I, I guess the example I use first for my students is Radioactive by Imagine Dragons. The chord progression for Imagine Dragons, I'm not gonna go through the chords massively here, but feel free to look them up. B minor, D, A, What you do with this song, and again, you've just got that basic rhythm or basic beat, one, two, three, four. We change chord two times in a bar. So we go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, okay? And that works. So I do it again. One, So it's knowing your song is really important. Now when I play um, Radioactive, I add in little and us. So I'd go one, two, and a, three, four, and one, two, and a, And all of a sudden it brings it together, makes it sound much more musical. All I'm doing there is after the one, two, I just go down, up really quick. So down, down, down. So in context, as you start 
start to get more experience doing songs like this, you'll start to hear more what you should do. And you'll develop your own kind of strumming patterns and how you want to apply them. Um, and that's fantastic. That's really what you should be doing. But this is a really good first step. I think a lot of people come to strumming songs either via books where it's just like playing G for four beats, play A minor for four beats, whatever. And it doesn't particularly prepare you for how you really approach this in a, in a real world sort of environment. Uh, there's Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol is also a really good one to learn because uh, the strumming for that is double time. So it doubles what we actually do um, in comparison to the beat. So it'd be, instead of just one, two, three, four, when you play Chasing Cars, it's... So that's definitely one worth checking out as well. Um, and I'll give you an example of that in context. So I'm changing between an A, an E, a D, and an A. And I'm gonna do 16 per chord now. No, I'm not, I'm lying. Yeah, I am gonna do 16 per chord, because it's two bars of each chord. Okay, so it's gonna be one, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four, and two, and three, and four. Okay, so the beat would be one, And that, I guess, is where we start to hit our first problem. There's four examples of what to do, but you have to fit the song. So if I'm playing Radioactive by Imagine Dragons with the double time of Chasing Cars, it's not gonna work. Yeah, it sounds weird. But also if I use then the relaxed kind of one, two, and uh, on Chasing Cars, takes away the identity of the song. So rhythm guitar is really easy for people to go, oh, it's fine, you just play a few chords, you do some strumming, but actually it's just as complex as lead guitar. So what I would suggest you do, you're watching this video, try the four examples I've gone through. So the really basic strumming on every beat in 4-4 four, four time, the slightly more complicated adding an upstroke just after the very last beat on the and, um, and then looking at songs like Radioactive by Imagine Dragons, Chasing Cars by Snow Patrol, um, and now I'm sure are tons of more modern songs, any of that. You could look at um, Perfect by Ed Sheeran and songs like that. So there's plenty to be getting on with. So uh, good luck, let me know how you get on in the comments below. Please subscribe, please like, and flip that notification bell if you want to see more videos by me. See you around, bye.